Hey everyone, today I want to make a quick video on how to make a trading bot in NinjaTrader and how to hook up that bot to a prop firm evaluation account. So this should work for any prop firm where it has the option to have a NinjaTrader account, but please be mindful that each firm has their own rules regarding automation and when it's allowed, whether that's on eval accounts or once it moves to a live account. I'll touch on that a little bit at the end, but right now we can just get into how to make a pretty simple trading bot idea. So first things first, from this control center, I'm gonna go to new and ninja script editor. There's a couple ways to do this, but I find this to be a little simpler. I'm just gonna right click on the strategies folder and click new strategy and I click next. And then I'm just gonna name this volume spike for YouTube. And I'm just gonna click generate here. So what this bot is going to do is just look for volume spikes at swing lows and swing highs. And when we get a volume spike in a swing low, we're going to take a small long scalp. And when we get a volume spike at a swing high, we're going to do the opposite and take a short scalp. So I'm going to add this properties region that allows us to define our settings. And the way we're going to determine a volume spike is from the measurements relative to this volume moving average here, which is this yellow line. And these are all the volume bars. So we're going to be looking for a set factor multiplied by this volume moving average. For example, if I want it to be two times the volume moving average, it would be somewhere around here at this point in time. And this would probably get triggered if this was a valid swing high or swing low. So for every setting, you're going to have to type this ninja script property. And right now I wanted to find what the length of the volume moving average is. So we can say that it's going to be a range anywhere from a value of one to the maximum value for an integer is going to be displayed with a name of, let's just say volume length for order. I'll make this the first element group name. I'll just say settings. And so this is going to be declared as a public integer with name volume length, where we can both get and set its properties, meaning we can read and write to it. Now I'm just going to copy that and paste it for our volume multiplier, which I'm just going to call volume X. And instead of an integer, it's gonna be a double so that we can do something like 1.5 times the volume moving average or anything with a decimal really. And so that's going to be a public double called vol x. Set that order to two. The order just means how it's gonna appear in the settings window. So volume length is gonna be first, vol x is gonna be second and so on. And we'll set this minimum value to zero just in case we want to have values less than one. So I'm gonna copy this and the only other two settings that we need to make are our stop and target values. So I'm gonna paste this again. This time I'm just gonna call this order stop and do the same thing for the actual variable name. Change that order to three. And I'm gonna do that one more time for our order target and change that as well and set order to four. So now if we save this by doing compile and I go to my actual chart, right click and do strategies, I'm gonna take off this one that I already made. And this is the one that I'm working on right now. So double click. Now you can see where that order parameter comes into play. I set this to one, two, three, four, and so forth. So it just lets you organize all your settings here. Obviously we haven't built any functionality for buying and selling yet. So not enabling this is not gonna do anything. So I'm gonna go back to the code editor. And one thing we wanna declare that's gonna allow us to use the volume moving average is this private volume moving average, ball MA1, let's call it. So this is basically the type that you're setting and this is kind of the name and how you're gonna access it. And so the way we actually get the volume moving average data here is to actually go into this state dot data loaded. And in here, we're gonna declare this vol MA1 to be equal to volume moving average, which is already a built-in feature that you can access in NinjaScript. And it's gonna take the close series and the length is going to be the volume length parameter that we specified earlier. And we should also set some default values for all the settings that we made. So for example, volume length, we can make that something like 100, since that's what's currently on my chart, just so it doesn't get confusing. Uh, volume X, we'll just make that one. So technically anything greater than or equal to the volume moving average would be considered a volume spike. I'm not saying that's best practice. I'm just, that'll be easier for us to visualize when we actually have it on the chart. Order stop. This is just gonna be in raw um, points. So since we're trading on NASDAQ, let's say it's something like 40 points since we can have some pretty wide swings. Order target, maybe make this something like 20 if we wanna make this more of a, a scalping bot. Again, these are all arbitrary. I'm really just trying to breeze through this and see how we can set something up pretty quick. So I'm gonna compile this and you see that we have no errors. That's a good habit to get into is compiling pretty often, especially if you're following 
um, tutorials from myself or others just to make sure that you can catch errors quick otherwise you kind of lose track of them and it gets pretty hard to debug sometimes especially if you're new to this stuff but so with all that figured out we can go into the on bar update and you see that this is where we actually add our strategy logic so since we're going to be checking for swing highs and swing lows um, we don't really care about anything that happens on the very first bar of the chart in other words when the current bar is zero the zero width index the first bar of the chart whatever you want to call it we're not going to be able to do anything with that information because a swing low and a swing high are both three bar patterns so we're going to need three bars on the chart at minimum so honestly we could probably just do this current bar is less than three really won't make too much of a difference but this is just so you avoid errors that if you look into you know the close from one bar ago um, sometimes you can run into errors if this isn't sorted out initially for example if something in your code said something like if close from one bar ago is less than close from three bars ago if you only have one bar on the chart then you're not going to be able to access three bars in the past and so it might throw an error so with that said we can set our stop loss and profit targets here and i'm just going to say double stop loss is going to be equal to the order stop that we initialized earlier and is going to be divided by tick size this isn't super necessary, but the way we're going to be setting our profit target and stop loss is going to be based on ticks. You can do it based on raw price alone and some other options as well. Uh, but this is just one that I've been accustomed to. So you can just take your initial stops and targets in a point format and divide that by the number of ticks per point, And that'll give you the total number of ticks for the stop and profit target. So similarly, I'm going to do double profit target equals order target divided by tick size now this alone doesn't do anything we have to actually set our profit target and stop loss so set profit target is a built-in function i'm going to pass in an empty string like i said earlier the calculation mode is going to be in ticks so we specify that and then the value that we're actually passing in we're doing instrument dot master instrument dot round to tick size of profit target so we're basically taking the profit target that we calculated and making sure that it is a valid number for NQ to process. In other words, it should be divisible by 0.25. It can't be something like ending in, you know, 0.33 because that's not a number that NQ would ever reach. Likewise, set stop loss is also a built-in function. So we pass in empty string calculation mode dot ticks and same thing here, instrument dot master instrument dot round to tick size and the stop loss that we define a couple lines above. I'm just gonna pass in false here for is simulated stop. And another thing to consider is that I only want this to trade during real trading hours, um, especially for prop firm evaluations. A lot of them will only let you trade up until 4 p.m. or 4.15 or something, and then any active trades will be automatically closed. Sometimes you can fail the account if the trader's still open by then. So we wanna make sure that that is not the case with ours. So we can do bool RTH, is equal to we're basically converting the current time to an integer so two time of time of the zero width element or the current bar is greater than or equal to i'm just going to say 930 and the way this is kind of processed is basically um kind of like hour minute second so it's a six digit number where 09 is the hour 30 is the minute zero zero is the second so i want to make sure that it's greater than 930 and that it's also less than, I'm just gonna say 3.59 Eastern Standard Time. So one minute before market close. That way, if this is not true and we're past um, 3.59 in the afternoon, then we can just set all trades to close automatically. So for the actual entry logic, remember I said that we're gonna be checking for a volume spike. So how we would determine that is if volume from one bar ago Again, we're gonna be using swing highs and swing lows, and that's a three bar pattern. So we wanna be looking one bar in the past to see what the volume is at that extreme. So if volume from one bar ago is greater than the volume moving average that we defined from one bar ago, multiplied by our volume factor, which again, I just set to one currently. I'm gonna wrap that in a parentheses, and I wanna specify that RTH is also true. Then we can open up this bracket and define how we wanna get long or short. So first we're going to look for longs and we want to do that by validating a swing low. So we can do that by saying if low from one bar ago is less than the low from two bars ago and the low from one bar ago is less than the current low, 
again, I'm going to throw up a picture on the screen to show you exactly what I'm talking about. As far as indexing, we want to make sure that the low from one bar ago is in the middle of that swing formation. And we want to make sure that in the case of a swing low, that that low is lower than both of its neighbors. And similarly, just to be a little more specific, we can say that the high from one bar ago is also less than the high from the bar surrounding it. So if all of that is true, then we can do enter long convert to int32 default quantity. And this is something that you can set up when you're actually um, enabling a strategy on your chart. You can set a default quantity or you can pass it in as a setting, doesn't really matter. So that is our long condition. So I'm gonna save that and compile it, make sure we don't have any issues. No issues there. So I'm gonna go to my chart, right click, go to strategies, double click, and I'm gonna do enable here. And we can see that the longs are working. So again, we're looking for a swing low here. So one, two, three bars. This one has a volume greater than the volume moving average multiplied by our volume factor, which is just one at the moment. So it enters at the open of the very next bar. This one got stopped out. Same for here, validated because there was a volume spike and a swing low formation and so on and so on. So our short condition is basically gonna be the same exact thing, just reversed. So it's gonna be if the high from one bar ago is greater than the high from two bars ago and the high from one bar ago is greater than the current bar's high. And likewise, we just want to add some extra criteria for the lows to make sure that the low from one bar ago is greater than that of two bars ago and also the current bar as well. So if that is true, then we want to do enter short, convert to int32, default quantity, empty string, close that off. Now, the last thing we want to do is if we are not in RTH, we want to just exit any longs and exit any shorts. So if we are past this time of 3.59 p.m. and we currently have an active trade, then this will just make sure that we're canceled out of everything. So I'm going to compile that and go back to my chart. I'm going to remove the old version, add a new one, click enabled. And now we see we have some shorts coming in here and here. So again, we have this swing high, three bar pattern, one, two, three. Volume is greater than the volume moving average. And so it enters at the open of the next bar. And this one ended up taking profit here. So that's pretty much it for the actual strategy piece. Now, as far as hooking it up to an actual prop firm or any account on NinjaTrader, you would go to your strategies tab, make sure this is disabled and click apply so that you can edit these settings here. And this is how you do it. You go to setup account. Instead of this being on SIM, which it probably is by default, you can pick your uh, prop firm account or whatever it is that you're gonna be having this trade on. And once you do that, you would have to click enabled and then apply. And once you do that, then it would start taking trades on that account. And again, I want to emphasize that each prop firm has their own specific rules that you really need to look into when you're doing this type of stuff. Because for example, I'm on Apex and I found an article that's talking about bots. And with regards to automation, it says that AI, autobots, algorithms, and so on are prohibited on PA and live accounts. So it doesn't say anything about evaluation accounts, but when accounts move to live, this is not something that you want to engage in, at least on Apex. Likewise, for copy trading, PA and live accounts must be traded by the actual individual listed on the account, not by other party, system, automated trading bot, etc. So all this is to say that you obviously just need to do your research on whatever firm you're using, make sure that what you're doing is allowed by them. Hooking it up here to your account is obviously the easy part. Writing the actual bot itself clearly takes more of the work. But yeah, hopefully all of that was pretty clear on how to get that set up. I've made a handful of trading bot videos on NinjaTrader before that I'll link throughout the video and in the description. I'll definitely be making more in the future. So if there's anything that you want to see specifically, feel free to let me know and I'll definitely consider it. But if you liked the video, please give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.